Do you know IT support is changing? It's changing. The day-to-day -day responsibilities of IT techs across the world, across all these different sorts of companies, is changing significantly. I mean, I remember when I started off in tech, my role was very defined. I had to just make sure that this thing was working well. It stayed up and I was able to upgrade it and make sure it was secure and that sort of stuff. And that's fine. And that's sort of the same as what it is right now. But it's a lot more complex right now. I mean, back in the day, it was very, very basic. You maybe just had to look after a server. Now you've got virtualization, you've got cloud, you've got AI, you've got cybersecurity to worry about, you've got automation that needs to be considered. I'll give you my thoughts around how the different level one, level two, level three roles have been changing and what I think is in store for us in the near, very, very near future. Because things, man, things are changing quickly. Technology changes very, very fast and that's exciting. That's why I got into tech. You gotta stay up to date. So as you know, I love playing around with servers. I love building new tech, physical tech and virtual tech. And what I also love is the ease of being able to also do that in the cloud, to be able to build a server in the cloud to be able to easily scale up and scale down based on the needs. Now we of course know all of the big providers that offer these services, but there's a company that I've been using for a little while called Liquid Web that do a lot of great stuff from a cloud perspective where you can actually go and deploy your servers. You can go and pick exactly the CPU, the RAM that you need, the hard drive capacity, and then the operating system. And this interface is really, really easy to use. Being able to access it from absolutely everywhere just makes the whole process so much easier. And it's actually going to be cheaper for you than some of these big ones that are out there right now. So if you wanna set up your own cloud-based server, go check out Liquid Web. I've got a link to it down below in this video description. Hey, click on the subscription button as well. Make sure you click on that bell so you don't miss out on anything that we are releasing. So a quick definition on level one, level two, level three of IT support. Level one people are your day-to-day -day help desk, service desk people. They're the ones who are receiving tickets from staff and they have to address those, okay? There's a ticketing system. They have to get on the phone. They have to email somebody. They have to instant message them on Teams and say, hey, how can we help you? And they try to fix it. It's then escalated it up to somebody who's in a level two position desktop support, IT analysts, these sort of folks who are now doing escalations of level one. So they're doing things that are a little bit more advanced. They may be now going out to the floor, opening up computers, doing more troubleshooting, playing a little bit more with command line, with scripting, with PowerShell, things like that to make sure that computers are working better. They're also gonna be building computers, maybe inducting staff, you know, as new staff come in, as staff leave, they need to just play around with Active Directory on the cloud and on-premise, a lot more than somebody who's in a level one. And then level three, you of course then move into your more system admins, your network engineers, your storage people, your security people, people that are more specialized in a specific craft that is a little bit more high level. So here's a few things that have dramatically been changing, or at least the things that I've been observing over the last number of years. A standard sysadmin, their day-to-day -day job would just be building servers, making sure that the servers were patched, maybe some basic security was applied against them, and uh, making sure that they worked with their networking friends to be able to make sure that they're connected to the network, that they're patched in, all of that sort of stuff. And a lot of the tech was generally on-premise, meaning that it was stored, servers were being built within data centers, within server environments. And that was sort of it. Of course, over the number of years, we all know that there was a significant shift to virtualization environments, moving away from the standard on-premise where you had to build the server for absolutely everything uh, physically, to now having to have physical servers that have got hypervisors to then be able to build virtualization platforms. And you build a whole bunch of VMs inside of that, right? And that's been around for a number of years now. That's nothing new. A lot of those technologies are changing because we've got a lot of companies that are changing the way that they work. Obviously, there's been a significant bigger push into the cloud. So I would say, if you're a tech in either of the level one, two, three environments, you need to learn about the cloud. And this is not the cloud like Microsoft 365 only. I mean, a lot of companies are using Microsoft 365 since that event of 2020 took over and everybody shifted stuff to Exchange in the cloud, everyone shifted to Teams or Zoom or something like that, right? We're now talking here about the, the big three. At this stage, you've got Microsoft Azure, You've got AWS and you've got the Google Cloud. You need to know about them. You need to know about them. You need to understand that a lot of companies 
are using these and they're using these a lot more than they used to. It's no longer virtualization on premise, it's virtualization now in the cloud. Now, specifically to the Microsoft suite, if you are running Microsoft 365, you're running in Azure space, you need to learn about Intune and how to do deployments, how to do patching, how to do packaging of applications and things like this. And then also you've got Active Directory in the cloud, Azure AD or now known as Entra. Got to get onto that tech. The other thing that has been taking off a lot more is the, uh, the, the DevOps space. This is where you've got development teams and you've got operations teams and even security teams that traditionally used to work very, very independent of each other. Developers did the development thing, operations people did the operations thing. When the developer finished their thing, they would pass it on to the ops team and then the ops team would go and do some basic testing and maybe deploy it out to staff or something like that. This DevOps model has been emerging and then if you throw in sec security, you've got the DevSecOps operations, where now you've got teams of people, individuals, who are doing development, operations, and security, all as the one role. So they've got an understanding of all of the three camps. And then that way, you just get stuff done sooner. You get stuff done quicker because the developers don't have to just worry about their thing and their thing alone. You've now got somebody in the middle of the operations team that can work closely with the developers, work closely with the operations team in this little cycle to make sure that things are done well and they're done quicker. So in this whole development DevOps space, uh, this new thing emerged some time ago called containers. If you've ever heard of Docker, this is now where you've actually got a container within a server to go and deploy stuff. Okay, so in the olden days, you had a physical box where you then installed some virtualization technology like VMware, you converted that into a hypervisor and then you built some VMs. Well, now within the servers themselves, you've got this other little thing called containers. Docker would be one example of those. Well, now you're deploying apps directly inside of a container, in a container itself. If you haven't delved around in this space, this is one thing that is only gonna pick up steam significantly is the area of containers. Now, if we swing back to what I said about the, the events of 2020 that shall not be named, remote work became a day-to-day -day thing. There's a lot more people working remotely even now than there used to be. Significant, I mean, everybody knows this, right? So it's, it's a no-brainer. So being able to build and deploy environments for a remote workforce, are really, really important. Techs need to now be able to support staff that are not just in one location or within a corporate network. They're now scattered all over the place at home. How do you guarantee the security of computers of home people's networks, their internet connections? How do you guarantee the security around all of that? You've now got to think about your VPN. Is that all being working correctly? Remote access, remote support, remote deployment of applications, of patches. How are you going to do that if there's now a remote workforce? That's definitely one area that has been changing a lot over the last few years and will only continue to change. Now, when you have people working remotely, you need to be able to control what they can and cannot do, what they can and cannot access. So in the Microsoft 365 space, if you are running that, and I think that a lot of companies will be using that more and more, is learning and enforcing conditional access. So if you don't know about conditional access, that is something that you need to know about right now because it's only going to grow. Another thing that is huge Huge, huge, huge is of course AI. AI, you ever seen Terminator? AI is gonna take jobs, it's gonna take IT jobs. So you need to stay on top of it, okay? Think about AI being able to provide a lot of your level one IT support nowadays. Staff don't have to ring up IT as much anymore and say, hey, I'm having this issue on my computer. They can just go to the AI machine, chat it in there and go, hey, tell me what's wrong. And he tells you, done, finish. So you need to get on top of understanding how AI is working how it's changing businesses, because I'm telling you, every business, like I have not run across a business yet that is not wanting to integrate AI into their IT strategy in some way. So you need to get on top of it. I call this thing um, level zero support. So you've got level one, two, and three. Level zero happens even beforehand. So how can you leverage AI to make things work better for you and the IT team that you are working with? AI will help a heck of a lot when it comes to the space of automation. How can AI just make things better for you, make things easier for you? But also, how do you ensure that AI does not get out of control within a company? Because there's all of this, there's this fancy term called IT governance, which is the rules that need to be put in place to ensure that IT teams can function properly, that the IT processes are followed properly. You don't just want staff in a company 
just spitting stuff into AI like they don't even care, right? Because that's pretty bad, right? And this is, sometimes this is company data, company secrets. And then they just copy and pasting it into an AI platform, like you as an admin, you're like so focused on making sure that your systems are secure, that all your data is protected. But then they're just sticking it up on the cloud into this some AI program to give you some stuff. Great, we wanna use AI, but we also wanna put some little guardrails and protection over it. So as an IT person, you need to get an understanding of AI. There's stuff around chat stuff, there's stuff around images, videos, can automate so many of your tasks. And I would say as an IT person, use it but use it with some guardrails, put some protections in place, but then you're gonna to have to work very, very closely with the staff in a company that you are managing to make sure that they're using it correctly. But AI is only going to grow closely associated with AI. We need to make our lives easier through automation. How do you automate so many things that used to be manual? We want you to have time to do other things so you can automate things as much as you can. We're talking about scripting. How can you automate patch deployment? How to package applications, operating systems, how to learn PowerShell. Anything that you can automate, try to automate it. It's only gonna grow in popularity and more and more people want to get more out of IT professionals, especially those who understand how to automate things and have the skill needed to reduce the manual workload that used to take hours should now be able to take minutes. The matrix, we don't want that to happen. We don't want the machines to win. So we need to start putting good stuff in place right now. Be ready for it. Another big thing that uh, has been building up a lot of steam, but it's only gonna get worse and worse and worse is the attacks on businesses from a cybersecurity perspective. So just making sure that you as an IT admin know your stuff around cybersecurity. Understand the tricks of the trade. What are the bad people trying to do? How do they get into a company? What are they doing? And how you can put things in place to protect it. Know your enemy. Great song by Rage Against the Machine. Know what they're doing so that you can then protect it. So this may be good for you to go and do a little bit of research around cybersecurity. There's lots of great courses. There's like this great one around ethical hacking. You can download and install Kali Linux if you want to learn a little bit about pen testing. But understanding this sort of stuff is gonna be really, really helpful and really, really important. I mean, every single day, right? You're opening up your newspaper. No one opens up a newspaper. You generally go like this. Now, you're reading every day of attacks on businesses, of data, being leaked, okay? Databases being breached, websites being defaced. How do you stop that? You need to stop that. So you need to understand more about the cybersecurity space. So making sure that you've got a right set of tools to make sure that there's no bad fishy stuff going on your network. There's proper endpoint protection software, there's malware protection, that there's intrusion detection, making sure that like if somebody, like here's an example, if, if a user is opening up PowerShell on their computer, shouldn't you know about it? Like, why is John Smith down at the mailroom opening up PowerShell? That's weird. He shouldn't be. Now, there's other stuff, right? But I think these are the things, these are the trends right now that you need to get on top of. You need to read more stuff. You need to keep up to date. Attend industry events like IT events. Get certified in certain things if you want because these things are only going to blow up, right? The IT industry is changing a lot. And the reality is you don't want to uh, fall behind. We don't want a sysadmin from... 15 years ago, from 10 years ago. We want somebody who knows their stuff right now, who I can hire and they know about cloud, they know about remote stuff, they know about AI, and they know about cybersecurity. Really, really important. Let me know in the description, are there others? I'm sure there are. Let me know, what do you think is coming up? What are some of the things that every single IT professional should be on top of? Do the like and subscribe, click on the bell as well so you don't miss out on anything, and we'll see you on the next video.